welcome to Navi YouTube channel. We're here at Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. Uh, it's a day two for us. And uh, before that, I wanted to do something that I wanted, that I planned for quite a long time. It's uh, the interview with our mental coach, Ula Xyred. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm great, thank you. How are you? Good. 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 Uh, preparing for a new day. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do this for a long time because I definitely know that uh, a lot of our fans and viewers are interested in uh, this interview because uh, uh, everyone keeps talking about the importance of a mental state now on the pro scene and obviously it is the case. So, But let's start from the top. Can you play, please tell us uh, what was your path, where it started? Because we definitely know you from ANS. Mm -hmm. It was your previous team, but I know that there is a history even behind this. So. Can you tell us about your path? How did you start it in, in, in uh, esports? I'm actually in esports for 10 years now. Uh, so kind of a dinosaur. I was like one of the first performance coaches that actually were, were looking after the players' uh, mentality. And I started in League of Legends. Um, it was 2014. And it was actually this time of the year. So it's actually 10 years now exactly. I'm a gamer myself and I used to watch a lot of League of Legends also like right when it started it was like a huge hype for it and there was a Polish team uh, playing um, in the EU, it was EU Masters but no it was EU LCS back then and obviously I was cheering for them and back then I was working in a corporation uh, as a senior manager but at the same time I was work, like doing a lot of coaching if it comes to team bonding productivity and just general training just to have a high performance team um, working their targets all the time so it was like business and then esport as a passion and while watching I was just seeing those disconnections between the players that they do not talk that they are angry that they have a lot of emotions impacting the game and I texted one of them like it was actually my partner that pushed me to text to text him because I was commentating while watching and it's like just text them like don't tell me that just tell them and this is how it started they invited me to the Poznan Game Arena to meet them and as of then we kind of started working and since I joined that team um, they were like 0-6 in the uh, in the league um, since I joined the team they did not lose a single game we kind of bonded nicely, uh, we, we adapted, like we introduced a different thought process and we focused them on things that they could control. And as of then, it started snowballing. Um, I was with Rocket for, it was like f for three years. Then uh, there was Fnatic, I was consulting TSM as well. And then I focused uh, on uh, US uh, for some time. I was cooperating with CLG and it was also like two and, a half, two and a half years or three years almost. This is the place where I met Victor actually. <laughs> so we worked together uh, in CLG. And then it was simultaneously CLG and ENS for some time. And then it's Navi. So it's like, you know, it's been 10 years. It yeah. flew just like that. But from project to project, I do feel like uh, players are more open uh, to mentality because back in the days when I started it was mostly that the players were um, just simply afraid you know they were just picturing me as yeah. someone that would sit them on a couch and Didn't know what make to them cry yes exactly yes so yeah it's totally not that way. <laughs> did anyone cry ever during uh, your session yes I had I, I had a couple of situations I had a couple of very tough situations with the players but it shows me that they trust me to open up mm -hmm. um, some of them were like very very uh, I would say private but also players have issues handling some of the criticism some of their expectations they put on themselves and once you teach them how to handle that and you build that connection and trust and you just work with a player for many years I, I until Navi I had players that I've been working for like six seven years mm. together so it's a kind of, you know, Strong process bond. that, yes, when there is a process and they, they want to cooperate, then obviously it would do. I've been in esports for 10 years already also. 
I cannot imagine, and I worked with players a lot, and I cannot imagine any of them having a performance coach because it wasn't the case. Like it was yeah. only started, so you were in the beginning of. Yeah, the to remember those gaming houses and yeah. all that. Yes. And now almost every uh, tier one team has uh, the person who helps. Um, Per player, per players with the mental state because uh, it is uh, something that you really need to be uh, aware of and you guys also if you need any help don't hesitate to ask someone you trust or the professional because it is very important and it's not nothing shame about it right all right let's talk about navi you've been with us for a couple of months already mm -hmm. how uh, difficult was it to build that connection with uh, our players and how long did it take I mean, to be honest, I I didn't know what to expect coming to Navi because obviously I joined uh, the team after Malta, so it was October, mm -hmm. and they were flying to Sydney, and I was just in the middle of like preparation, my prepping myself for for support to support them. So I joined them in bootcamp in Barcelona, and I was not sure what to expect, but actually they welcomed me very, uh, like they were very open to everything. Uh, They're open to them to open themselves up to me as well with. Uh, you know all their past and like you know what's their plan like how can I be of support so to be honest like I did not feel uh, that I'm like not welcome or like mm -hmm. there is a tension or anything so I feel like this is one of the teams that my uh, me stepping in was like super smooth and uh, I guess like a lot of the players worked with Marina in the past in this uh, team big bow to her because she's done fantastic job with the players so like being able to continue and having her by her, you know by her side by my side and that's that's amazing to to have someone next to me so I feel like they already knew what's coming and you know and I guess this is something that uh, it's good to have like an ex a female that you know even though we don't work much but taking over like the job she done fantastically it's just pure pleasure yeah and it was it felt like you were the missing puzzle because we uh missed marina mm -hmm. because we switched the language and now mm -hmm. we needed yes. someone and you was that uh, piece that we were uh, so much uh, that we needed so much but uh, it was uh, yeah, the period when everything was changing cs2 and uh, yeah i can uh, i can bet that that was uh, quite challenging um, but uh, we have another big challenge as navi is a big brand one of the biggest in the world and uh, we we are in the spotlight constantly and this is a big pressure for players because as uh, you joined us uh, wonderful joined us also mm -hmm. and it is especially challenging for um people from Eastern Europe, because there are a lot of Eastern European, obviously, fans that criticize, that uh, have a lot of uh, hopes and uh, put a lot of pressure on players. And I think that it might be hard, especially for Igor and Valera. Mm -hmm. Was that the case, that Navi is too big and the pressure is too big for players? I mean, the thing is that uh, it's not about the like the pressure from the players themselves. It's I feel like what they want is not to let anyone down. It's more like feeling that we can we are still good enough to compete we are good enough to match the expectations as you said from fan uh, from fans and also from like the organization what we changed uh, in barcelona and when we were facilitating uh, igor is that we changed the dynamic i tried to focus the players a lot on understanding themselves on focusing on building the team dynamic the chemistry you know reinforcing the trust a little bit because every time a player joins as a team, uh, people get a little bit shy. They don't know what's coming. Mm -hmm. And once you push them to open up, to joke a little bit more, to do things together and not to be like, you know, competing inside of the team, but just like having a specific goal and direction, uh, that is that is amazing. And, you know, also Andri was uh, supporting me in that because I also didn't know much about the team so we started right away with putting the right tone and just having the right expectations for the players not to tell them that um, you know we demand from them specific things and we want them to be like you know machines right away we want them to be in an environment that is pleasant that is fun that is you know they're eager to compete they're eager eager to uh, like come to work daily without any frustrations without any you know bad feelings or anything like that so i feel like one thing was the expectations that uh that we had the other thing was that uh we created like a place where there's a room for error and you know that players 
learn very well from their own mistakes. They analyze their game a lot. And this is a team where they don't wait for like others to tell them what to do. This is a team that, you know, the game finishes, they run into the PCs, they watch their own performance, they work on, you know, their positioning, whether they missed the molly, whether they, the smoke was right. So this is a team that is constantly doing something. And if they're facilitated in a way that this is appreciated and everyone is seeing their hard work, then the team all of a sudden wants to click and be together. And Igor was that type of player that at the beginning, I mean, people are not talking about it, but players, when they join a new team, they have to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And if it comes to strategies, if it comes to positioning, if it comes to the names of the positions, and also different teams have different style of work and also different style of the game. So for him, the beginning, was pretty demanding because he joined the team with a with, Bladen. De with demanding coach. Yes, Blade is demanding coach, but he's also the coach that will give you all the tools. Needed. And he knows how to explain difficult exactly. things. Yes. Yes. So he was. Uh, so Igor was like feeling that yes, I have a lot to do. But then we had Victor supporting him. We had Blade. I w he had me. So we kind of created him like an environment where he had the error for mistakes. It was not so stressful for him to fit uh, Sasha Sue's and. At this point, he was just like, yeah, I w I'm welcome. Like, you know, nobody's judging me. I'm just growing. And then he's very mature for his age. Yes. Uh, he and is confident. Yes, confident, hardworking. He knows his value. And uh, the fact that, you know, uh, I managed to also kind of dive into his past a little bit and to his expectations just to shape them a little bit mm -hmm. so they're not pressuring him. I mean, it's it's a pleasure to work with uh, with him and with all the players that are actually super open to to change, right? Yeah, um, you were talking about the fruitful environment to create slowly create <coughs> success. Mm -hmm. So um, I, w I have a question: two teams, first team with the superstar players mm -hmm. that uh, be was winning majors tournaments before, and everyone expects from them to just uh, I don't know to win everything to destroy everyone. But that doesn't work. And that's not the case. Something doesn't work there. Another team, they have not average, but no, they don't have the players that are called superstars and mm -hmm. nobody, um, and, uh, everyone underestimate them, mm -hmm. but it works. So it's all about the through this healthy environment. Yeah, it is mostly about the healthy environment. Players inside of the team, they have the tendency to be pressured by others and if they see that like somebody in the team is very reactive or get easily nervous or frustrated so what they do they are afraid to make mistakes that's why what i was talking about we create an environment where they can make mistakes, can make mistakes. Uh, when the player is afraid of making mistakes all of a sudden instead of playing instinctively and like you know being all intuitive in the game he's thinking what his teammate yes will, will say. so i'll play cautiously not to make mistakes not to make anyone angry inside of the team and all of a sudden their dynamic changed a lot so it's not about that all of a sudden the star player is just you know the the reason for all the evil it's all about individually how we handle those situations and how we handle that control of like would i even care that mm -hmm. somebody is angry and do my job or should i just be cautious so the players had to get used to a kind of um, decision making inside of the game and um it takes time you know and i feel like every roster when they start together when they glue together they they need that energy they need that positivity you know me a little bit you know that i'm constantly positive and even That's if true. something is happening inside of the team i try to look at the good side and you know what we did well and we could do better and the players also learned that with time that not always constantly uh, beat yourself about mistakes Being but no, also find your own strength yeah, yeah even when you lose it's not a tragedy it's not the end of the world i mean yes Amazing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit some secrets of uh, Navi's preparation before the <laughs> officials and before break? Something you can share with us, like how uh, does this uh, system works and how does it look like? So, I mean, I'm obviously getting to know the players still. So I, you know, I still am in a mode where I need to balance the things I do with them, with the things uh, Andre does with them, because at this point, the amount of knowledge they have, um, 
and the amount of things he needs to teach them that's a lot so i don't have that much time to like take over and uh you know do too many things but things we do together there seem to be fun and like one of the things that um could be interesting uh to you is that um you see them probably juggling you know walking it's around with the balls and like they're now professional <laughs> jugglers yes juggling is a part of a cross crawl activities that are activating both hemispheres um so one of the hemispheres is more like calculated analytical the other one is more like instinct and uh, emotions mm -hmm. and uh, when you activate both of them uh, it's basically you getting more uh, intuitive and instinctive in game so that's why one of the routines for example we introduced are the cross crawl activities uh, the exercises that are um, supporting their thought process before the games you probably have seen uh, Iga Świątek juggling before the game with the balls and people were like oh you know she is uh, uh, she's a woman of talent. She he, she can do a lot of things. No, that's the part of her warm up. That's the part of her routine. Amazing. And this is what we do here as well. And it was funny when first time uh, I told them about that, and I showed them that hey guys, we're about to learn to juggle, and they were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Why? But yeah, they they finally like you know uh, bought into bought themselves into it. They they felt that there is a difference when they play when that they can focus longer they can be more uh, in the game itself and creating that set of activities for routines for the players is super important because that gives them the control so quite often when uh, when the players have a he hectic day all over the place you know you don't know when time what time you eat what time you start what time you do, do those things then the players are like not in control of their things and when you don't feel that you control your confident and doing stuff uh, like outside of the game you also have no discipline inside of the game so introducing like a specific rhythm when we do a lot of things together from warm-up breathing exercises in the morning cross crawl activities at the same time uh, then these are the things that are just building their routine and uh, you know the players were telling me like actually it's good to have like a specific schedule when we do a set of activities because we we feel like yeah it's it's giving us confidence we like we control things so mm -hmm. it's building the confidence game. outside of the game mm -hmm. and inside of the game like i was i was smiling when uh, when i was doing that uh, juggling with them and valera was like uh, like no but right now you see them juggling with Yesterday. any ball you give them and uh, it was also funny when we were in um, uh, in Copenhagen and we went for team dinner and we finished the team dinner everyone was waiting for a shuttle uh, just to go back to hotel and there was a lot of snow so what the boys did they created the snowballs and they started juggling with the snowballs and for me it was like okay like you know uh, two like a month ago they would not even say like they can do it but right now this is how far it's going this is so already a habit yeah that's already yeah well, y just yesterday i filmed uh, valera juggling before the first uh, map yeah. Yeah. and they, yeah, they're having so much fun i tried to learn that also but it's too hard for me yet but I'm going, I'm going there. So Let's juggling, guys, and discipline, <laughs> that is the key. Uh, all right, um, I wanted to talk to you about not such positive things like mm -hmm. losses. Mm -hmm. uh, in, For example, we have yesterday's case mm -hmm. against uh, Team Spirit. The game was very interesting. I, I think so far mm -hmm. the most interesting in Katowice. Mm -hmm. um, Although we had a very good streak in RMR and Blast Spring groups, but this uh, particular first game was uh, a loss for us. So how to... I know that players can, can shut down after the things mm -hmm. like that. So what is the routine after losses? What did you do yesterday? Did you communicate? Did you uh, did you talk about uh, things mm -hmm. that happened? And uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so it was like the first loss for us uh, since the season started. So mm -hmm. the key thing for me yesterday is do not let them overthink too much because when players have that tendency of overthinking like I don't know we're not good enough or something like this happened da, da, da. it's like it's not good for their stability because they may start doubting themselves and we don't want that a loss is a good especially in such an environment because first of all we can test our abilities and we can troubleshoot right away so if we had um you know if there was some mistakes if we have gaps in i don't know theories or whatever it is like that's not my side so I, I cannot talk about it much but if there are any gaps that we can control or we can change this is the best material for uh, for andre and for flashy to work around to 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 fill in the gaps and prepare for bigger events or different events that we also have uh, ahead of us so 
having a loss at the beginning of tournament is a it's it's allowing us to play more game officials which is also good for the team i know sometimes it's good to have a uh, two days off and chill and like relax mm -hmm. but in a team like that that is like pretty young we we, we we are not so experienced together experiencing those situations and allowing yourself like what am I thinking now about myself? Where, where are my thoughts, you know? Uh, what am I, am I still, you know, do I still have the confidence and so on? Like, these are the things that are, that is, that are the main focus. Uh, so we just discussed that yesterday, but we also focused a lot on the things we did well and we need to see more of. So just so they know, like, yes, everyone makes a mistake. It's a, this game is about mistakes, right? But how you, handle your strength in those specific environment and how you approach or like your own preparation like did I do everything well was I sleeping long enough did I eat enough you know was my routine properly uh, you know in place and so on and so forth so if we look into that having like a shaky day uh, it's good for the players also so they just don't go over their heads with like ego approach and so on so I would say a mistake is always, like a lost game is always needed uh, there is never a good time for having a loss, you know, you can lose at the first game or you can lose at the final and it still stings as long as you care. So if we see that, yes, let's work around that and there is a motivation from the players to do that, then what else can we, you know, wish for, right? So I would say this team with a mistake, yes, uh, I would not even call it a mistake with like a space to develop. We need those spaces and a team needs to lose just to see what else can we improve. So mm -hmm. approaching it like that is always like the best option. Some players get very emotional during the games. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I suppose they hype this, they, themselves up like mm -hmm. this and hyping their team also. Um, you know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. screaming, mm -hmm. uh, shouting, uh, offending the, the opponents mm -hmm. um, on the, uh, during the game. And uh, the other is, I would say, like ours. Mm -hmm. we are pretty focused and quiet. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. like cheer when the, everything goes right, but uh, that's, that is not like, we're not very mm -hmm. emotional. So um, what do you think uh, is the right thing to do, I mm -hmm. guess? And because uh, in my opinion, it might, the first uh, option, yes, when you are too emotional, you might be burned out easily. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that the case? What do you think about this and how to control your emotions? Yeah, the ego is quite often an issue, especially in the young players that are just appearing on stage. And the moment they're snowballing with some victories and let's say that there there is a situation that, um, I don't know, you, you do have that ability to win a couple of games and get that confidence, that is, that is great. Uh, but then with time quite often, when the person is winning a lot at the very beginning of the career, it's hard for them to handle losses. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have that mix, you know, controlled emotions like, okay, I can go overexcited, mm -hmm. but then with overexcitement, I tend to disrespect the opponent to the extent that I'm making mistakes, or I can be too um, underexcited, which is like the peak performance tree. When you're not excited enough, then you just are cautious and we also don't want that. So it's usually that to get into the peak performance, you need to have that uh, right amount of excitement and a bit of hum being a bit of humble just to be able to focus because if you're overexcited then you just constantly think oh I'll show them I'll show them and then if you make a mistake you feel embarrassed yeah. and that yeah. embarrassment is take over your game and quite often your emotions we've seen that in the past like there were many situations where the teams were like um, disrespecting one another and then the team was snowballing there was close victory I don't know it was like 11-2 uh, and then all of a sudden uh, it was like 13, 11. So there's a very thin line between disrespect and ego versus being humble and controlled. And it's good to learn that with time. And some people learn it the easy way. Some people learn it the hard way. I prefer our boys to e learn it easy way and stay on the humble level. If it comes to the um, shouts between the teams, I mean, if the teams know each other and they're friendly yeah, and they're joking the, around, yeah, the then, then that's pumping, you know? Sometimes you play your ex team and then you just mm -hmm. you just know you call them names that you called them in the previous team. And that's, that's in a funny way. And that's building, that's okay. But if this is very passive aggressive, then it can fire back. Not even passive aggressive it can be just aggressive, just aggressive. yes exactly yes. <laughs> all right i have um, the 
segment for you in the end where I will ask you for advices for me, for you guys, for everyone mm -hmm. uh, watching. Uh, so short answers, short questions, like a blitz, let's say it mm -hmm. like that. So how to be productive when you're extremely stressed? Like uh, you have bad sleep, but it's cold outside, you have no sun, it's winter, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. How to be in focus and tonus, mm -hmm. how to? Mm -hmm. So the best way is to like, um have a specific routine that you know that is always bringing you a good uh, vibe. Uh, for me, if I wake up in a bad mood and I have a lot of things to do, music is for me the key. Like, you know, I know what to listen to, I know how to vibe myself. Uh, quite often like to call my friend, you know, we just chit chat, laugh a little bit. Uh, every person knows what is making you feel good. Sometimes it can be a good breakfast, sometimes it can be anything. At some point, if you know each other and uh, you don't want to allow yourself to have that bad day, uh, it's all about, you know, your thoughts. Whether you get up, look at the mirror and you just be like, oh my God, you look so bad. And that's going to be a, such a bad day. Then you're defining the day already. But if yeah. you get up in the morning, you look into the mirror, like, yeah, you look bad. You need makeup, you need smile and you need a good breakfast. And then it's already like, you know, not allowing those negative emotions to take over you. And it's the same, like if you have an important game and you allow yourself to have a bad day, what if this is a world final? Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about what we allow ourselves to We choose to how to feel, right? Yes. And one thing you can ask the players what I taught them, and they will probably tell you, you are what you think. Yeah. So that's, this Only is how it you works. Decide. Yes. Yeah, I know that sounds funny because I, I, I've heard that before and I was like, no, nah, that's not, not the case, but it, it is the case. Uh, what is the best way to prepare yourself for an um, intellectual and physical challenge for important mm -hmm. game day? Mm -hmm. no, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's good to have a routine because uh, our body loves routine. Like even when you look at uh, little children, you know, when they have a specific time with specific hours and they all of a sudden they usually have, I don't know, breakfast on a specific time and then the kids are missing the breakfast. They start crying because mm -hmm. their body is in the need of it. So if you create a specific routine with the specific timers then you know your productivity is there and your body know knows like when to be productive when it's needed give what anxiety right yes so you kind of deal with uh everything you need to do it's also good to push away or assign things that you have to do in that specific day so if you have an important day but you also know that you need to speak with your accountant or the bank is uh, i don't know calling you for days and so on or you have a fight with your partner uh, then at some point you know that these are all the thoughts that are at the back of your head you need to assign them you need to make sure that your head is clear in a specific moment not to have too many things at the same time because what if you just play the game and all of a sudden you feel like oh shit, I forgot about the bank. Or you have a pain in your back, right? And then you don't go physiotherapy, but then you sit and play and you feel like, oh my God, my back is in pain. Where can you, how can you focus on the game if you have those mm -hmm. things? So it's all about regular preparation that you make. I mean, it's hard to prepare yourself just like that when you don't have a routine. But if you set routines from the very like beginning, and you could even look at Pasha, you know, uh, he's also having like a regular days with routines and that's always making him productive. Like all the players have their own routines and you don't need to be a professional player to have a routine to know that you enjoy a morning coffee or to, to know that like what's good for you. So in here, I would focus a lot on setting up steps that are warming you up. Mm -hmm. It could be including the mental warm up, physical warm up. Um, do not forget to go outside to get the daylight because that's a natural cortisol that is running into you. So these are the things that a player, a person knows, but at some point it's hard to generalize for like one routine for everyone because you're all different. So, so do what you like and do it constantly, regularly, and uh, you're good. Yes. How to rest right after the, <clears throat> this challenge. I mean, reset is a pretty important thing. And um, some, some athletes, they think that if they don't play competitively and they reset, but they still play the game, they're resetting. Quite often it's not the case, you know, mm -hmm. because you're still exposed. I know that uh, a full reset for, uh, for the players should be like the time without the computer for a couple of days, making sure we are not uh, thinking about the game. We just kind of disconnect because that disconnection will allow you to bring more dopamine once you go back into the game because that's what we need like dopamine is pumping us and hyping us up to be productive it's reinforcing focus and motivation and if we constantly feed ourselves with the same meal 
and we eat it for breakfast, uh, supper or dinner and all the time the same, the same. At some point we would be like, no, I don't want to eat it anymore. So let's just put that meal aside for some time and then let's go back to it so we can reset the dopamine and still be hungry for that specific meal. It's okay to miss the game a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah? absolutely. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for this. Thank you. I was waiting for this for so long and uh, yeah, I could go on, go on talking to you and hopefully I have this opportunity as we work together. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I wish you a good day. Thank you for your time. I wish us uh, a win today against Apex. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe to Ula's uh, uh, social media. You Thank will you. see all the links here and uh, under the video. So have a nice day, guys. Thank you so much and subscribe to the channel. Bye. Thank you. Bye.